Okay, hello and welcome back to Simon Says Artwork. My name's Simon and in this video I'm going to be drawing like Peter draws. I don't know if I'm going to call it this or just draw it, call it the post-it note drawing, but that's where I got the idea from. Is uh, It was a Peter draws video that inspired me to try this same technique and I think it's really useful to get you started on a drawing that you may have otherwise hesitated to, to get started with. The technique he used was to have a post-it note and start drawing on that and let your drawing just drift off the post-it note onto the page. So I do the same thing here. And then I think that my thinking was just to move the post-it note around and try to leave bits of space in places but for it to be just randomized a bit so you can see here that i'm not sticking it down and leaving it there i'm um, i'm just moving it around and trying to connect different corners of the post-it note with different aspects of the drawing and it works quite well you know, um, I mean, to use the different corners so you can just turn it around and pivot it from one corner to the other and get quite an interesting abstract drawing. I'm using the uh, the um, what are they called? They're not. Um, they're not. Uh, oh, wow. I can't. I've just lost the words. Let me think. Get my brain together. Right. Here they are, the rotaring pens. They're not the um, ones which Peter uses. These are the uh, Rapidograph pens, um, which are pretty similar as far as I'm aware. Um, but uh, yeah, they're, they're really nice. They do have this single line weight to them. And I don't use them very often, but I do really enjoy them. And then I just keep moving it around and then trying to draw this kind of mutation kind of stuff in between. So it's not really drawing like Peter draws because Peter draws does it in, in a way where he has his own patterns and marks that he makes. You know, he's really good at doing mandala stuff and then freeing himself from the constraints of a mandala to more um, just his own sort of design and abstraction. So I, instead of doing anything like a mandala, just go to this kind of mutation, you know, internal organ, splattery, gory type of stuff that you can see here. And I really quite like it, even though, you know, it did make me think of internal organs. So it isn't too abstract to become something which is just, um, you know, making you really see or think of things which are similar or, or kind of vaguely... Um, reminiscent of uh, body parts, you know, or some kind of same thing that you'd see in a dissection. So that's why I've also drawn um, things which could be considered ribs, because I thought that could, you know, kind of frame it somewhat to have ribs on either side. But even though it looks a bit like internal organs, I do keep it looking a bit alien, a bit mutant, because I always enjoy drawings like that. And try to use bits of hatching and shading to um, give the illusion of depth and tone and, and shape, you know, to sort of suggest a 3D form. And then there's bits of wiry, stringy uh, lines that I also like to put in. Or, or it could be considered hair, but I'm not thinking of anything specific. It's more just line after line. And I really like building up those um, collections of lines stacked against each other because you know they can look amazing when you just stick to it and keep going so that's what i do in this to try and get some background tone so that it makes the other stuff that i've been drawing pop out a little bit more now um the spaces were something which i didn't do with any forethought either i just put the post-it note down and drew over them and around them and then i didn't really consider what happens but then after the drawing starts to develop I do see that it's you know three boxes and then one small strip which if you turn it 
portrait wise you know the if you turn it you know 90 degrees so that it's like a portrait picture it looks like two eyes a box nose and a smiley mouth and i quite like that as well even though it was you know initially drawn as you can see in the landscape position but as far as i'm aware there's there's no right or wrong way for this i'm sure whoever ends up with this drawing will pick away i've not got it framed i've not I've not even got this drawing handy. I'm not too sure where it is at the moment. But this was back when Peter Draws first did this video of um, a post-it note. And it took me about, I think it took me over a month to do this. So you see in different sessions, every time you see a, a different angle or, you know, the camera is adjusted slightly. It means it'll be a different day. Um, so whenever there's a slight cut. I've had to take a break and go to bed because it does take a long time to do drawings like this and your hands get achy, you know, because you, you're just constantly trying to add to things. Um, it's something which you can't really get too wrong, you know, because no matter what you do, it's so abstract that you can't really make mistakes. So I quite enjoy drawings like that. But at the same time, I say that. And if you look where the ribs are, I've done that hatching type of shading and it's uh, the ribs go into it and that to me is it just kind of hit me in a way which made me think I need to reconcile that by making the hatching darker to suggest that the ribs just go into it so you'll see what I do here to try and fix that which is I darken the the ribs which doesn't look good at first but if you keep at it I think it's just becomes a bit more interesting and then I darken the parts uh, in between the ribs so that it makes it look as though the bits which I've hatched could be legitimately um, that dark as they go beneath these main top objects and the and the gaps of the post-it notes but it is supposed to still be quite abstract and I do get to points where I think I'm done and then I look at it and I think well there's more shading over here and there's less there and I don't want it to be heavier on shadow in one place and not another. So you do have this internal measure of saying, shouldn't this be darker and don't you want to balance it a bit more? I certainly have that. And I recommend anyone who you know wants to draw more or wants to draw anything like this to really be tough on yourself and to look and think of what's wrong with it. But enjoy what's right about it. But try and think about what's wrong with it. And to me, I always have this nagging voice in my head that says that isn't right that doesn't look good it's too heavy there it's not even necessarily too heavy a shadow it just makes the bits which aren't heavier look wrong and look unresolved and that's what I'm working on um, sometimes it's the background and at other times it's the the bits of shapes that I draw in the foreground but because I've created this um loads of hatching lines in the background it gives you this opportunity as well to start to create shapes in the hatching which just means that you go back in on top of those lines you go on top of them again but you don't you don't go over all of them you just go over parts of it and shapes just start to pop out and it's not anything specific oh, sorry i've got a bit of indigestion here um it's nothing specific so i do want it to all suggest certain things but not um, be too literal it was a fun drawing to do and i do plan on getting it framed at some point but um it just didn't happen at the time and so it got filed away and i say filed away it'll have been chucked into a box with loads of other drawings um but it's definitely not thrown away i do have it somewhere um so you can see here i'm kind of getting there but um it's it's got shading in different places and not in others. So I start to go back over the stuff on top, you know, the stuff which is really quite white, except for the boxes uh, of space, which I want to try and preserve. Um, but I do try to make sure that I've got some level of um, hatching to suggest the shape and the depth and the angle of these 3D objects on top. And that's why um, I'm going in here. But it is coming towards the end, so all I'm looking to do now is just darken some of the bits of the background uh, just to give it a little bit more pop. 
and then I'm, I'm kind of happy with how it's looking because it's you know it's looking kind of quite dark and I quite like that dark gory look and at the same time the boxes almost look like a smiley face so yeah I hope you like this video this was a, a fun one to do and I really appreciate Peter Draws giving us that prompt so I hope you enjoyed it uh, please watch another video and like and subscribe and, and comment on whatnot. Okay, thanks.